I was excited about it. Uh, Darren and I uh, have known each other for a while, so we had always been talking about cool and creative ways we could apply my skill set to, you know, his world of, of gaming and esports. So we've always been kicking around ideas. So the fact that this Rocket League car came up, uh, I thought it was a perfect application for, for my skill set and to use some of the tools and technology that we have to make this digital asset a real asset. <laughs> CEO breaks <laughs> breaks cars. Rocket League would be one of those esports that I find really interesting and really exciting. Um, it's entry level of accessibility just to people who have never been introduced to esports is super high. Uh, unlike other games, it can be quite confusing. Anyone can watch a game of Rocket League and understand what's going on pretty quickly. Um, that's why I think it makes a great esport. Not only that, the technical ability of the players making thrilling matches, but like I said, being able to sh just sit down and watch it, it relates to traditional sports is why I think it's so important and it fills such an important role in esports. What gave me the idea to create the car? Honestly, um, I can't really remember. <laughs> no, I, uh, I was sitting there one day and I always try and think of activations that haven't been done before where you know we can do something cool to give back to the fans and the audiences. And I remember just sitting down one day and thinking, well, I wonder if it's possible to build a car. And then I realized that a good friend of mine, uh, Alex, uh, is a sculptor and makes great things. And we sat down one night and he said it could be done. And we did some mock-ups and we created the Octane. And it was so great that we decided we wanted the Fennec now. And uh, well, here it is. It was, I, remember the, I remember the struggles. We just, it was, yeah. I honestly can't remember how I came up with the idea that, that I wanted a, a Rocket League car. I just don't know what it was. I, I, yeah. To this day, I still, I think when, once we got the decal with the sponsor on game, I think I just said to Intel, I think I was like, hey, you guys want me to build this for real? I know a guy who could do it. Yeah. And they were like, how much would it cost? And I was like, this much. And they went, hell yeah, let's do it. So yeah. we did it. So yeah. um, that was the first one. Uh, first one is in Philly. Yeah. Um, what's different between this one and the first one? So the first it looks one, different to me. Yeah. So actually the foam that this one is sitting on is the foam that the Octane was made out of. It's, it's white EPS foam. It's expanded polystyrene. This is uh, polyurethane foam. It's a totally different it seems, chemical is it, composition. Is it lighter or? It seems lighter. It, I don't know if that's it's just It's actually the same density. Right. This is a, or I'm sorry. It's the same density as what we made the octane out of. This is pound and a half. We made the octane out of two pound. This is actually two and a half pound. So this is a more dense per cubic foot foam um, than the octane, but we there's a lot more negative space in this one. Okay. So the weight of the two will be about the same. The problem solving, you know, it always starts with an idea and oh, that's a cool idea, but how are we going to execute it really depends on what its purpose is, where it's going, how it's going to be interacted with. Is it something that is just going to stand alone in the building and never be touched? Is it going outside? So a lot of that environment, environmental data has to be considered in figuring out what material we want to use, how long it's going to take, all, all the different steps to apply the whole world of creative fabrication into these projects. So that's, that's what I love is discovering just outside of the cool idea, the actual intent behind it, and then finding the right product, the right materials, the right process for that one. And usually you're not doing the same thing twice. So it's always the synthesis of all these different experiences and materials that is the fun thing to do, is really just combine all that stuff together, mash it all up to end up with the result that you want. The Rocket League cards will help Sonic Esports in, in terms of just Peep eyes, you know, people are going to see them. It's never been done before. People, you know, any impressions that we can get, any brand awareness that we can get is great. Um, you know, once these things start going to conventions and events, you know, people, people are going to take pictures with them, share it on social media. And look, it's just cool. Let's be fair, we're all big kids in this industry. And if I get the chance to build a cool model like a Rocket League car, I'm going to do it. That's what I'm most excited about. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's a lot, it's a lot different. It's a lot more work. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot more work, um, but it's 
It's so eye-catching and captivating. I think y'all made a really good design choice with that. Yeah, we went a little, the, the Octane was a little bit safe because we had to follow some guidelines. This one, they kind of just went, do whatever you want. So we no, did. It's, it's, we worked with Intel for a great, a great scheme. Well, Intel's one of our, obviously one of our premier partners. We love working with those guys. And when I mentioned to them about doing this, I mean, I, they were just all for it. It was like, oh my God, this sounds so cool. Let's make it happen. Uh, and without them, this wouldn't be happening. So yeah, no, they've been super helpful, super keen to get this done. And they are so happy with the Octane. Now we've got the Fennec um, and we're hoping they'll both be at TwitchCon pretty soon, or at least one of them. Well, the plan is to have all three eventually. I mean, the end game is to have one that drives.